Wheaton Metro is odd because you know it's a pretty long distance between any landing, and in addition, Forest Glen is odd. Now, the Forest Glen, of course, they're using the elevators on a daily basis to move people. Not so many people move on the Wheaton elevators, only usually only the handicapped. But uh, I don't know. Have you all ever run down? Usually they send two units to Forest Glen because it's kind of confusing and complicated. Have you all ever run Forest Glen? All right. Forest Glen has a couple of intermediate landings, like safety spots you can stop. But you can easily have an elevator that will be 50 or 60 feet between any open. And what we, what we have down there is a special way that we can bring the elevator down, even with the other elevator, open the car doors and put a bridge across. But that's a special case. and. We're not going to go get deeply into something that's so special. 19, is, if you ever want to know about it, you should call the guys at 19 because they run that thing all the time. All right, so we want to make contact. And this is, this is fairly important, and this is something we don't always do. You want to try to talk to the people in the elevator and get them to calm down. Last thing you need to do is be in the middle of doing your deal and they're calling 911 panic. Oh, I don't think the fire department's here yet. Oh, they haven't found me. So try to make contact. Determine if they're in stress and stay in contact. Um, one of the best things to do once you've determined where that elevator is, is put somebody at that elevator door that's closest to them. You know, open the door a little bit and just talk to them. Keep them calm. It'll make your life a lot easier in the end. All right, so I said that isolating the power is one of my pet peeves. And to me, it's not an option. It's got to be done. You've got no idea if that car is going to move again. The other thing that isolating the power is going to do is it's going to give you a chance to do a hard reset. Any elevator that's been upgraded has a computer that runs it. You know, it used to be we had these elevator machine rooms that were filled with relays that clicked and clacked and made things work. Now everything's microprocessor driven. So just like at home when your porn machine stops, what do you do? You turn it off, turn it back on, and 99% of the time it resets itself and you go about your business. You can do the same thing with the elevator. Now when you go, when you go into the machine room, and you're going to have to locate the machine room, and again, if it's a... If it's a traction elevator, that machine room is almost always going to be on top of the elevator shaft. If it's a hydraulic, it's usually going to be at the base of the elevator. But you need to locate that machine room, get your Knox box keys, should have a key to the machine room. When you go into the machine room, you're going to think, see things labeled 1, 2, 3, 4 over here, which isn't in the picture. And then these are labeled, the little boxes are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. Over here, this building has two elevators, one, two, and then over here, one, two. The little boxes you don't have to touch, and you don't want to touch. The little boxes give you light, and the fan, and the emergency phone um, will continue to work. So if you leave the little box on, you'll keep the people in the elevator from panicking. All of a sudden, if you turn both off and you put them in the dark, you're going to have a problem. So leave the little box on, and you you open or turn off the elevator at the big box. And again, the car numbers should match the car numbers labeled in the lobby. Any questions? Okay. So, I don't, do you all have lockout tag equipment on the engine? Or the tower? Anybody? No. They're required to by county inventory. Uh, so, a lockout tag out, all that means is you don't necessarily want to tie up one guy to uh, babysit that switch that you've just opened. And the reason you need to lock it out is in you doing this, the elevator guy could have come behind you get, and you could miss each other and all of a sudden he could turn the power back onto the elevator while you're doing your work. So you have to lock it, lock it out and uh, we don't generally need to tag it because we're not going to leave it that way. It's basically a, a has block. If there's a chance you're going to have more than one crew working, you would use one of these. And each crew then puts their own lock on there. And until you're done and the last person is leaving, you can't take this off. That's an added safety step that uh, is in our 
our lockout tagout box has our elevator keys and this, and it's supposed to come off the truck any elevator rescue we do. Any questions about that? Okay. So you turn the elevator off, wait 60 seconds, just like you would your computer, turn it back off, wait like another 60 seconds or so for it to recycle, and then see if the elevator works again. Easy method to get them out of the elevator. I think we came to assist you guys on a call at 3333 University Boulevard. That's what we did. We turned it off, waited a little bit, turned it back on, elevator moved, we got the people off. Once we got the people off, then we went and turned the elevator back off again. Because the elevator stopped for a reason. Turn the elevator back off again, leave a note, and the elevator repair guy will come figure out what's going on. The good thing is, with it being a computer-driven system, anything that happens in the elevator is recorded. So when that elevator guy comes, he's able to pull up the record, see what happened, and say, okay, we had a problem with this switch, and, all, and so on. But again, it's my opinion that we take these elevator rescues entirely too lightly. And let's say 999 times out of 1,000, you could do this without turning the switch off. You'd never have an incident. But you don't want to be that one time in a thousand when that car moves. You know, not only for the for the victims in the elevator, but yourself. Any questions so far? Is everybody awake? No. All right, so we, we need to gain access to the shaft. This will be part of the rescue, or it could be at the lobby, and you're trying to uh, figure out where the car is. Um, Fortunately, most of the time, a, a, we use a single drop key. Everybody's familiar with elevator keys? Okay, elevator keys come in many different styles. There's a, there's a T key. There's a moon key. There's a double drop key. There's a single drop key somewhere on here. Or it might be in the other one. It might have been on the other one. Yeah, we don't have a single drop key on there. If you don't have a single drop key, usually the double drop key will do the same thing. What you're doing when you use the elevator key is you're going through the hoistway keyhole, which is right there, and you're basically replicating what the elevator car does to open the doors. Now remember, there's nothing that opens the doors on each floor. The mechanism to open the doors is on the elevator car and it moves with the elevator. So what you're doing is you're mimicking the action of the elevator car to open those hoistway doors. Okay? In old installations, that keyway is on the lobby level, it's on the top floor. Sorry for masks. It's on the lobby, it's on the top floor, and the bottom floor. That's where we developed the technique of using the elevator pole, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, new installations, or installations that have been renovated, they actually put the keyhole on every floor. Now what's interesting is the keyhole is just a hole. I can't imagine there was much expense to it. It's just a hole. The mechanism is there anyway. So that mechanism is on every floor, so why they didn't have a keyhole on every floor from day one, I have no idea, but they didn't. Um, one trick that you can do, if you're in a 17 or 18 story building, and you get like an emergent situation where you don't have time to work your way up the floors or work your way across, you can actually take like a piece of cardboard, put it on there as a template, mark where the hole is, take that to the other elevator door, drill a hole, and you should be right at the spot you need to basically do the same thing. So that's one option you have. And again, you're putting the, the drop key into the hole, the key drops down once it goes in, and can everybody see the picture here? You you're rotate it, it manipulates the mechanism and unlocks that hoistway door. Now we're going to do, we're going to actually do this in the elevator we're going to go to, we're going to have a chance to actually put people in the shaft to watch the uh, drop key work. This is a finesse operation. This is much more about finesse than it is brute strength. 
How do you do that? So you have to you have to be gentle, and you want to feel what's going on because it's all about feeling when this when you're in deep enough. Yeah, I had. And when you've rotated to the spot where you've hit the mechanism. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's all about finesse. Mechanism. Um, I, the other thing that I typically do, because it's a finesse operation, we've got another set of keys that's filled with keys. And if you try to do it with it on the ring, you'll never feel that very slight you know, touch. So I usually, whatever ring I'm using, I usually take off the big ring so I get a little bit more touch to it. But again, we're going to actually do this at this elevator, and the ideal thing about this elevator is you're going to be able to go into the shaft and watch it. And it, it's one of those things, I think, that once you see it from the inside, what you're trying to do, the next one you do, it really becomes fairly easy. All right, hydraulic elevators. We have, so now we've figured out how to get into the shaft at, the, let's say, the lobby level. We've looked in the elevator to see where the... Uh, where the car is, we've kind of determined where the car is either through the enunciator or looking into the shaft. Now we're going to go to where that car is on a traction elevator and get the hoist weight doors and try to get the people out. We have a great cheater on hydraulic elevators, and that is if once you get into the machine room, you've isolated the power at the pump will be, and it's not usually labeled very well, and it's not a big giant valve, it's usually a very small valve, right here is the valve. You have somebody at the lobby, and you can bring the thing all the way down if you want, or you can bring it to the closest floor, and they basically open this up, drain the fluid out, and you can lower the car all the way down. If you get the car to within, within one inch of the lobby, up or down, opening the doors becomes usually fairly easy. Now the elevator we're going to work on, it doesn't, but most of the time if your car is within one inch, you can just physically open the doors without even using the hoist weight key. The one we're going to go to doesn't quite work like that, but most of them do. So that's the great cheater for hydraulic elevators. So hydraulic elevators should always be just a piece of cake. piece of cake. And we're going to actually do this when we go out so you can see that. But again, you're not going to open up, you know, this pump is sitting above the oil reservoir. You're not going to open it up and it's not going to have some big giant sign with an arrow saying, you know, lower me here. It might have a little sign, it might have no sign at all, but that's basically what it's going to look like is something small. All right, for traction elevators, if it's stuck between floors, you want to open the hoistway doors that are going to give you the biggest opening between, I don't know how to describe this. So if, if the car is stuck between floors, you want to give the biggest, you want to open the doors that are going to give you the biggest opening when you get the people out. So you're either going to have them climb out or climb down. They're going to climb up and out or climb down. Um, incredibly dangerous operation. Incredibly <coughs> dangerous. It seems so simple. Uh, Arlington County, 10 years ago, elevator gets stuck, guy inside is, you know, thinks he's MacGyver, he knows he can get the doors open, he gets the doors open, he gets the hoistway doors open, he jumps out of the elevator, it's kind of halfway between floors, he jumps out, the lady inside, she jumps out, whoop, she loses her balance, 15 floors down she goes and dies. So, you got to remember that you're making an opening, you got to be extra cautious. So you want to put some, once you get the doors open, have them, again, stay where they're at, put somebody in the car with them to assist, use a ladder, you know, if you're going up or down more than a few feet, you know, get a uh, attic ladder would be ideal. Protect the opening from a fall. If you need to get a second ladder and put it across the opening, do that. If you need to have guys stand you know, if somebody's jumping off out of that car, stand on each side so that they can't fall backwards. You know, you got to do that. And again, the power must be off. You know, imagine you're in the middle of somebody climbing out of that elevator and that elevator car moves, and now you're responsible for that person, you know, probably undergoing a, a pretty
pretty severe and tragic death. Um, New York City, and New York City has more elevators than anywhere in the world, and that's why all these stories kind of always come back to New York City. The single, the single largest owner of elevators in the world is the New York City Housing Authority. So one day, these, this man and this woman are riding the elevator. He's got his Walkman on. Elevator stops. Again, MacGyver, he knows he can get the doors open. He gets the doors open. He goes to climb out. Elevator moves, decapitates him. His body falls down into the shaft. His head rolls back into the car. And the lady was stuck in the elevator now with his head with a Walkman on, you know, just staring up at her. So they said, I talked to some of the guys that ran that call. And they said, she was a little freaked out, as you can imagine. So you can't make the assumption that that car is not going to move again. So that's why that turning that power off is a must. Not an option, it's a must. All right. So one thing that occasionally we have to do, I'm not the biggest fan of polling, but you can pull for the elevator. You can pull up, you can pull down. And what you're doing with the pole is you're kind of doing what you do with the keyway. You're reaching across from one elevator to the other with this pole that's skinny and can be made to be long and you're reaching across and you're basically manipulating oh this is pretty cool, I didn't plan this you're basically manipulating the device and in this case it lifts up to unlock and you're manipulating it so somebody else that can then open it when you unlock the hoistway door when you pull up or down you're basically getting into the shaft and reaching up and you're manipulating the device, and that's why you have the extension, because you might have to reach up, you know, 12 feet, whatever it might be. Um, you know, when I was young and first came in, you know, this was our primary method we would start with, is polling. And we would just pull up, and if we had to, if we had to pull up from the lobby level and work our way up, that's what we did. I never even thought about it, but, you know, none of us, I don't think, are going to go to a 10-story building and stand on the edge of the roof and lean ourselves over the building and do this. But we did it all the time in elevators. So if you're going to have to pull up or down, and everybody understand what I'm talking about? You want to have something that gives you some fall protection. So it might be a ladder across the opening that two guys hold and you can lean against the ladder. Or it might be you actually put on fall protection and tie yourself off to somebody. But you can't just, and I guess it's because it's a dark shaft that people just don't think about it. You can't just lean yourself over, you know, five, six, seven stories. That's a recipe for disaster. Um, the place you would need to pull up and down and you would have very little choice would be a, an elevator that's a single, a single car in a hoistway. Because you're not going to have an opportunity to pull across. And I'm talking about pulling across. I'll show you when we go to the site, I'll show you exactly what we mean. All right, any questions so far?